Yesterday, the blue, green and no drop watch reports were released. This is an interim look at the quality of our drinking water, our wastewater treatment and water conservation, respectively. Worryingly, there's been a sharp decline in water quality levels. In 2012, only 10% of our drinking water showed potentially unsafe levels of bacteria. This report says 50% of areas uh, sampled show drinking water is at a higher level of unsafe bacteria. More than one third of our wastewater treatment facilities are now at a critical stage. And as we've seen with the Hammanskral cholera outbreak, unreliable water sources opens the door for disease. While there's some comfort that the water ministry is clearly grasping the nettle on the problems that need urgent attention, it's not only going to cost billions to fix, but the report indicates very little is being done to sort the problems out. The seeming inertia at local level could also see more years of neglect and the longer we leave a problem like this, the worse it's going to become. Let's discuss this now with Gary Parsons, who is the Water Sustainability Specialist at the Council for Scientific and Industrial Research. Thank you so much for joining us. The more I read in this interim report, the more worried I get. Um, you know, just I didn't pay much attention yesterday to the no drop part of the report. Um, which shows that 46% of our water is actually being wasted. Um, you know, that there's, <laughs> I mean, that's, that's a lot higher than the global average, and they said that we should keep below 30%. But that's an aside, because I think the real worry is the quality of drinking water. 10% um, um, of our drinking water showed worrying levels of dangerous bacteria some 10 years ago. Now it's up to 50%. But what does that actually mean? Is it is it definitely going to make you sick? Uh, what, do we, what do we do with this information? Good evening. Thanks for having me. Um, yeah, so it is indicating, and I think the minister even says so in his opening remarks in the, in the report, he says that there has been a decline in the status of our water supply services. So it does mean that the water quality is poor in many of the systems that are presented in the, uh, the watch report, the Blue Drop watch report. And so there's an increased potential for, if you're drinking that water, for it to make you sick. So it's an increased risk and increased potential. And that I think is the worrying statistic there. Um, you can't say for sure or for definite that you will get sick if you, if you drink that water but it does increase the risk. And you don't want anybody um, to be drinking that water with the potential risk of getting severely sick. Uh, I wouldn't want that for my family people, and therefore I wouldn't want it for anybody else in South Africa. Yeah, absolutely. We know that municipalities have to do regular water testing. This report is finding that some municipalities are not doing that anymore. So, yeah, um, municipalities are financially constrained entities, a lot of them. Um, and so the limited amount of money that they have in the budget to do the required water testing um, can sometimes mean that they forego the testing that's required by our water standard called SANS 241, uh, the drinking water standard in South Africa. So they're not all monitoring all of the parameters as frequently as they should. Um, and therefore, they are not 100% sure of the quality of the water. So that's, that is an issue as well. You know what's really sad is that we, we've always been told uh, that our tap water is among the best in the world. Do you think that we can still lay claim to that in some areas, or is that a dream that's gone by? Look, I think in certain areas, um, it was clear from the report that I was reading uh, that certain areas have like 98% and 97% compliance, and they're good. So in those areas, sure, I 100% agree with that sentiment. But unfortunately, there's a larger number of places that are having less and less uh, water that's safe to drink uh, without you further doing some stuff to it, like, for example, boiling it to make sure that it's safe to drink. So I think it is it is a bit of a par sentiment, um, and we'll need to work some 
uh, a considerable amount to get it back to that level throughout South Africa. Mm. You obviously research water, you're in the field. Um, do you drink the tap water happily? At home, uh, I do, but I'm also aware that I need to be, you know, I can't be sentimental. So if I'm away, if I don't know the quality of the water, then I don't take a chance. Um, I don't use it for drinking. I would rather buy bottled water. But that's not to say that all bottled water can always be safe. So I, I, I don't want to, I don't want to malign anybody. But you know, sometimes it's safer to uh, drink bottled water, especially if you're not sure about the quality of the water you're drinking um, in the tap from various areas. Are you saying sometimes bottled water isn't even safe? Now you're freaking half of yours out, <laughs> at least. <laughs> I just caution to say that you can't assume that the bottle that you buy in the shop is safe. You can you can read the label, um, but you know maybe it's because I've been in the business for a long time. But I don't assume anything, um, and I just try and buy from sources that I rely on. Uh, I I. I'm cautious that way. Okay, all right, <laughs> we'll, we'll leave it at cautious. So you say you've been in the business a long time. Um, have you been able to also see quite clearly how things have deteriorated? And, you know, obviously Hammond's Kroll is top of mind for everyone, um, but you must have been able to see a lot of this deterioration over the years. What, what for you has gone wrong? Which are the areas of greatest concern? Ah, oh, it's just the assumption that infrastructure will last forever and ever without you, you spending any money to, to do anything about it. Um, infrastructure, I've been to sites where infrastructure is very well looked after, um, is maintained, is looked after, is kept in good condition, and that infrastructure just lasts and lasts. That's the infrastructure that lasts and lasts. But I've also been to places where infrastructure was basically put in new has been used and used and used and used, has broken down, has not been repaired, has not been replaced. And so you're in a position where those systems that used to work so well mm -hmm. no longer do, and there's no solution, or there's been no solution to get them, get them working, get them uh, looked after. So definitely not spending enough maintenance, um, time and money mm. on maintaining things. It's like your car, you know? Yeah. You can't just keep driving it and driving it. You've got to maintain it. And the longer you, or the better you maintain it, the longer it lasts. Okay. I drive a car that was manufactured in 2003. Um, and it still goes very well. Yeah, and of course, the older, <laughs> the older it gets, uh, the more care and attention it needs. If I had to ask you where you are worrying the next Hammond's Kral might be in terms of a water tragedy, uh, can you name a few? <laughs> I don't want to incriminate myself or anybody else, but this problem is that we have in South Africa is widespread, and I think the Blue Drop Watch report shows that clearly. And so it doesn't surprise me when I see more areas in South Africa where these sort of outbreaks are going to happen. Because anywhere where you have unsanitary conditions, then you increase the risk of outbreaks like the cholera outbreak. And that could, that's not going to just be refined or, or confined to one or two areas. And we're seeing that in South Africa. I was reading News 24 today, and I saw that there was the first confirmed case in the northwest province. Mm. So it is getting more prevalent. And it, it is moving is to other areas. Spreading, but it's... Yeah, that's very true. It's, it's where there are unsanitary conditions, yeah. Do you have hope? Um, Anthony Turton was praising the water minister, saying at least he's being open about the problems. Do you have hope that government, having learnt lessons from uh, neglecting ESCOM and now seeing this awful tragedy in Hammond's Kral, uh, that the water minister, first of all, he's reinstated these drop reports, but he seems to be very open about the problems. Do you think that is a very positive sign, or are you a bit cynical? No, I'm, I'm in agreement. I am a huge fan of the Blue Drop and the Green Drop uh, reports and the programs. Um, they lay bare for every South African. We can download them and we can look. They lay bare the current state of water and wastewater in South Africa. 
And I am a firm believer it's having that information is the very first step in order to be able to do it. I, I went into withdrawal when between 2014 and 2021, we didn't have any of this information because we knew it was bad, but we didn't know how much. But now we know how much or how bad it is, and we can at least act on it. It's the very first step, and I think it's a long way to recovery, but I am very positive, and I applaud the bravery to do it because Nobody wants to see this, and people would prefer maybe to hide it, but having that information is critical. Yeah, it absolutely is. Even though I guess we're going to be playing a bit of Russian roulette with our tap water, um, because we know that 50%, and this is obviously not a full sample of all the wastewater and water treatment and water systems in the country. It was a sample. But that sample did show that 50% of our drinking water does contain potentially harmful bacteria. So it's a bit of Russian roulette. You might get a harmful bacteria, you might not. And you know all the people in Joburg who say when the first rains come, I always get a runny tummy from the tap water. Maybe they're being proven right. But as you say, important that we know about it. We have a starting point. Let's hope we see concerted attention on our ailing infrastructure. Thank you so much for speaking to us this evening. Much appreciated. Gary Parsons is a water sustainability specialist at the Council for Scientific and Industrial Research. We didn't even get into the details of how much water we are wasting. And that was shocking. I've always been told we're losing at least 30% of our water to leaks. This report says... 46% of our water is being wasted through a combination of leaks, which of course worsens when infrastructure uh, becomes weaker and weaker. But also, and this is something that we're used to for electricity, illegal connections to the water system. So customers who are not paying and just essentially stealing the water. But 46% loss uh, of potential revenue for water is massive, particularly for municipalities who are ailing, who do not have the funds. And those funds, of course, in part, are used to fix the infrastructure. So you can see the vicious cycle of decline uh, that is coming in to a number of areas.